Welcome to our vlog this week. I am so excited to have one of my clients and one of my dear friends, Chris Boyd Johnson, Christy Boyd Johnson here. And Christy has ghosted over 21 books, nonfiction books at that for a variety of businesses. She's an honors graduate of National University's professional screenwriting program with an MFA and an award-winning children's book writer and a former teacher. And she just didn't tune her own home, toot her own, own horn there, but she's also an award-winning screenwriter. Now she has, now Christy has combined her love of writing and teaching and formed her premier coaching business, The New Author Project, to help entrepreneurs and small business owners develop their ideas into viable books. If you've ever wanted to write a book, go to www.crushyourexpertbook.com and take her quiz and see where you stand in the process because the process is everything in a book when you figure out what the mistakes are that people do. So welcome, Christy. I'm used to calling you Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Christy. I, I, I'm, my name's changed. No. <laughs> Just throw it out there. Yeah. <laughs> never and I'll answer. I get it. <laughs> So we're going to talk about today the big mistake that small business owners and entrepreneurs make when writing their expert books. And, and that big problem is discussing the process instead of focusing on what the client needs really are and, and the results. And, and I agree with that 100% because I read books all the time where they tell us how they're going to do that. And they think it's, um, they think it's important because it's different than how other people do it but people don't really care. What they care about is, am I going to get results? Am I going to get benefits from this book? So, um, exactly. so can you define what you mean by writing, writers discussing their process? Because I just glossed on it, but go deeper into that part. <laughs> well, first of all, thanks Juliet for having me today. It's really, I really feel honored to be here and I appreciate it. And yes, you actually said it pretty well. Um, when an author discusses their pro process, it literally means that they're writing about their process, how they do their business and, um, or their daily routines. So I, I thought of an example that I, of a person I worked with, a chiropractor, but we'll just call him Dr. X. And he wanted to write a book to promote his business and then also elevate himself as an author, elevate himself to the level of expert. And his first book that he brought me was all about how he works with the client when they come in and how gentle he is and how he finds out what, he, what needs adjusting and um, how he's different with children and, or adults or elderly people or athletes and so forth. It was all about him. And it was also a monster. It was like this <laughs> It was, it was just like, I read a few pages and I'm just like, okay, this just, no, it's just not going to work because nobody cares how you do it. Right? Like, dude, just crack me. I want to feel better. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that, that causes problems for the writer because more often than not, that's what you get. You get the book is a monster. It's a long ramble. It doesn't make much sense. It only makes sense to the actual person who wrote it. And so it, 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 it's not going to serve the purpose of elevating himself as an expert and, uh, and actually giving value to the people who are reading who are either his clients currently or potential clients. And the reason is essentially that it, there's no connection between the, re the reader and the writer. So when you read any book, uh, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, you have to feel connected. In fiction, generally, you feel connected to the character. You're rooting for them or you're against them, but you're connected to it. Mm -hmm. But in nonfiction, you have to feel connected to the writer because the writer is writing something of value to the reader. So if the reader doesn't feel that, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. And you know, that's the difference in marketing the two too, why it's so much harder to market fiction because you have to have people fall in love with the characters before they know them, which is right. 
pretty darn difficult sometimes and why those fiction authors quite, you know, a lot of them don't even, nobody knows who they are until, you know, three, four, five books in. So exactly. I, yeah. For me, it was my third book and it was, you know, it, it was difficult up until then. So, uh, uh, um, so why did they get sucked in to that when they're writing their expert books? It's because these people are, in fact, experts in their field. They, their heads are just full of all the information that they deal with every single day and has become pretty much second nature to them. And that is a commendable thing. That is definitely a good thing that they, they have knowledge, but it isn't enough to show the world how much knowledge you have because they pretty much can figure if you're if you have md behind your name or you're a chiropractor or you're you have any initials behind your name that establish credentials or you've been working in a field for a very long time it's pretty much a given this that you're an expert mm -hmm. so um the the world has changed so much though the 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 world has become this kind of world of tweets and little short blurbs and and Facebook posts and and so attention spans have dwindled, which is tying back to the monster book thing. That's a big mistake. That's another big boo boo. Uh, we want to they. It's better for the author to take a very focused part of their business and focus all about on one thing. So in my chiropractor example, let's say he goes, okay, well, one of the big problems that my audience has are migraines. I get, I probably 70% of my clients have migraines. And so he, if he chooses then to take that subject and talk on, not about how he fixes migraines, but talks about it in terms of the client. So how people suffer from this, maybe statistics on how many people suffer from it so that people can feel like they're not alone and weave in the stories of his real life clients and testimonials and examples, then he can get a little bit in of, well, with, with Jane Doe, I, um, I had to be very careful because she had actually had a back injury where she broke her back. And so her, her migraines came from that. So adjusting her was a little different than this athlete over here who had, who played football and gets migraines because he's got damage from playing football. You know, it's, it depends. But then the stories connect emotionally. Story is the best thing. It connects emotionally with the reader. But it's all about uplifting the reader to feel like, oh, wow, that person, that person got better. So maybe I can get better. Maybe I don't have to spend three days on the floor with my head packed in ice. Maybe I could go to this person and actually start to feel better. And then if that same chiropractor then can then go, okay, well, I've got this first book. Now I'm going to write about low back pain in my next book. And then I'm going to write about, um, you know, sciatica in my next book. And then I'm going to write a book specifically about athletes because that's my, that's one of my big audiences and athletes and specific needs to athletes and how chiropractor can help them with their performance. And then now he's got four books. He's got, a huge amount of credibility because he's passed that three mark he's got four and it's very very simple to focus a topic and orient it all towards this is going to make you feel better if you suffer from this you will feel better and this is why and that's what people want they want to know that they get they're going to get an answer to their problem they don't care how you do it they just want it to get fixed very good. And you actually answered my best, my next question at the oh. same time. You know that though, I'm, I'm going to say, here's another reason why people get so into the process is we have a lot of people come to us and they've written a book because a coach told them to. And we've actually had people come to us where they, they'll say, you know, I'm stuck on chapter eight joint ventures and we'll go, well, let's get through that. Let's help you. And we'll hear something like, well, I've never actually done one. So we have a lot of that going out there too, where they get deep into the process because they don't really know what they're doing the way mm -hmm. they should. And I think that's probably one of the big downfalls in the expert space 
as well is you got to have a book, you got to have a book, but I don't even have a practice. Like I don't really even have a business. So very, very weird. This so is true. Explain, explain transformational writing. How is that different? Well, transformational writing literally means that you focus your book on the benefits to the client or the reader. Um, it's all about, um, changing their life in a significant way, but, but at the same time, it's only one significant way. You, there's no way an, any expert out there in any field can put every ounce of information that they know about their business into one book. It just, like, we'll say it again, it becomes a monster, it becomes unreadable, it becomes all about them, and it just, it's no, no, no all the way down the road. It's better to break it up. So you focus on one thing that will transform the reader's life in a significant way. And like we said with the chiropractor, um, writing a whole bunch of little, smaller books, maybe about 75 pages, give or take. Um, that, and then the, the, another benefit to the reader is that they can, they go, oh, I've heard of Dr. X. I, you know, I've heard about these books. And then they check out your list of books on Amazon or on your website and they go, Oh, wow. Well, I'm not really, I don't really need migraines, but man, my sciatica, I, I sit at the computer all day and I have terrible sciatica. I'm going to get that book. They self determine what they need. And the, but the author has just taken little pieces of here's how you can feel better knowing what they know from their business and made it into something that, the reader can benefit from. So the reader can go, gee, look, there's exercises in here that are exactly for sciatica. And they start doing them and maybe they start feeling better and they go, you know, I'm gonna call this guy because that really helped me. And now if I go to him, I think I could get rid of this. And that's what you want. You want, you want to build your clientele. That's what an expert book is for, or books. It's for the purpose of building up your business, establishing your credibility and authority as an expert in your field and elevating you above every other expert in the same field that's out there. Because there are, it doesn't matter what it is, there's always a bunch of people <laughs> in that field. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I actually just met someone back in December at an event and, um, you know, we, we chatted for a few minutes and then, you know, I realized she had a book and I went and bought her book and I called her after I wrote it. And I'm like, we need to have lunch, dear. <laughs> and, that, and I have to tell you, it, it was a fabulous lunch. And I actually I told her that that book I had right after I read it, I had a client that came to me and I was like, I have got the perfect exercise for you. And I put her through the exercise that uh, then Lauren had in that book. And it, it was pretty amazing. So it happens. It happens. Yes, it does. Can you give our audience a tip about how to avoid these traps? Okay, actually, I think I, I have two tips because they're so interrelated. But firstly, it, it's really helpful if the author writes the book in second person, meaning you, like I'm talking to you. And if you do this exercise, it will help your sciatica in this, this, and this way. And you should notice this difference within about a week or whatever the exam, whatever the, the, the expert field is. And then um, I think a lot of people resist that because in school, teachers are, you never write in second person. You never say you and you never say I. But this isn't school and it's an expert book and it's the purpose of it is to reach an audience. So that, that's what connects because they feel like they're being talked to. Right. And the second tip I have is, I, I already touched on it, is focus on one thing. Pick, pick something. And I guarantee you, I have this little trick that I use with people as I tell them, I just want you to write a list of all the things you want to address in your book. Just write a list. And they'll write a list and it'll come out to, you know, 10 or 12 items. And I say, see, now each one of those is a book. And they go, what? Like, what? <laughs> and they, kinda, they either, most people are, they think they don't have a book in them, but they do. They usually have way more than one book in them. And they just don't know it because they don't know how to 
focus it and really tailor each book to a specific need. That's very cool. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. That was a lot of great information. So once again, you have a quiz uh, and a community on Facebook. So let's pump them both because I know you put a lot of work into building them both. <laughs> um, where can they find your community over on Facebook? Just it's Crush Your Expert Book on Facebook. Just uh, click join and, and there's three real easy questions to answer. And then we'll, on our, uh, each week we, we have um, different days for different things. Wednesday is I go live and usually it's talking, it's tips or information that writers can really use. Yeah, and the Feedback Friday. She has a Feedback yeah. Friday every week where you can actually put a paragraph of your work and she will critique for you. So that's super helpful. You have access to a professional writing coach. And the quiz again, where can they take the quiz and find out where these skills are at? The quiz is www.crushyourexpertbook.com. Just go there and take the quiz. It's very quick, maybe five minutes. And um, you'll get an email back telling you where you stand. And then we can go from there. Sounds great. Well, thank you very much. And you guys, you, see you next week.